This episode is brought to you by Kraken Pro. With all new trading features and a fully customizable interface, it's Kraken's most powerful crypto trading platform, well, ever. Head to pro.kraken.com and trade like a pro. Cryptocurrencies are unregulated in the UK. Profits may be subject to capital gains tax and the value of cryptocurrencies can go down or up. Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be doing some messing around in the weeds around the topic of royalties and then also diving down some rabbit holes that are also related to that topic. My intention here is to make sure that you have a clearer understanding of how the royalties payout and structure works and some red flags, things to watch out for and also some opportunities that you may not be aware of as yet. And then also some different ways to think about the kinds of formulas that are in play with the royalties question. So let's jump right in. If you've been doing your research on distribution, then you may have some idea that there are several options available to you in terms of audiobook distribution. I'm differentiating here between distribution and retailers, so retail outlets or platforms, because they are different. When I'm referring to distribution, I'm talking about the method or the avenue or the path that is getting you from having your audiobook files ready to go to that path to getting them available to the general public. When we're talking about retail platforms or other like library platforms, music platforms, then we're talking about the places where people are buying them. That's like Audible or Spotify or places like that, or the local library even where they're borrowing them. And while the customer themselves may not be paying a fee to do so, the library is paying a rental fee for the use of your audiobook. Now, when it comes to distribution, the path that you choose is going to somewhat affect the royalties that you receive, although much of the royalties formula is based on what the retailers are paying out. So really, when we're talking about the digital distributors, then we're mostly talking about the number of platforms that your audiobook will be submitted to. They are negotiating different terms slightly from one digital distributor to another, but the differences, I believe, are negligible. I will add, though, that the way that any digital distributor is describing what you're going to receive may make it look like on one platform you're getting way, way more than you are on another when really it may just be a question of transparency regarding what that formula is. Now, before we go any further, a little disclaimer, I am basing what I'm telling you on information that is publicly available and not all of the formulas or the deals between one company and another are publicly available. I just wanna make it clear that because I want to be transparent about what it is that I'm sharing with you and the information that I have that it's based on, the sources I have that it's based on, so that you can make the best decision you can make in terms of your own audiobook royalties. So while we're going to focus in this episode on royalties, I do want you to keep in the back of your mind or make a note to yourself that when you're exploring which ways or way you want to go with your audiobook distribution, that you are factoring not only the royalties, but also the question of distribution. 
what I mean by that is that the the places that you're going to show up, what retail platforms are you going to be on? Are you going to be on the most that are possible so that you can be in front of your audience wherever they show up pretty much? Or are you going to limit that? And I'll mention some of those things as we go along. But again, I'm focused mostly on royalties. So let's start off with ACX. ACX is part of Amazon. It is the production side of Audible. And ACX distributes only to Audible and iTunes. When it comes to ACX, they have the most limited distribution since they only go through Audible and iTunes. And that will seriously limit your potential to be in front of your audience. Yes, they do hold the market share, but they do not hold the entire market by any stretch of the imagination. And many people are becoming more, or I should say, more people are becoming Amazon averse. They would rather not go through Amazon for many reasons and uh, that I'm not going to go into right now. So let's take a look at what the offering is at ACX, how they state it, and then how the, what, the formula more realistically works. When you go on to acx.com, you, if you're just submitting your audiobook, we're not going to go into the production side right now, but when you're submitting your audiobook for distribution, you're going to be faced with two options. One of those will look much more enticing than the other, and that's very deliberate. They do really try to incentivize exclusivity so that they are the only place where your audiobook is available. Well, them and iTunes, of course. But they will say, or they do say, that you can earn 40% if you go exclusive versus 25% if you go non-exclusive. The question I am always trying to get authors to make sure that they ask themselves, if nobody else, is 40% or 25% of what? Because they don't say that up front, and they are counting on you assuming that they mean that percentage of whatever they choose to sell it for. Side note, that's another reason to not be wanting to go that way as well, because you have no say at all in what they choose to sell it for. On other platforms, other retailers, you get to at least suggest a price, and most people or most companies will actually use the price that you suggest. That's not an option to even make a suggestion on ACX. So back to the numbers. 40% of what? Well, when you go into a little bit deeper into their website and try to find out how the royalties are calculated, there's some really key language to pay attention to. It says, the royalties you earn are calculated using net receipts for the three categories of sales above. And they have described the Three types of sales are the ones where members buy them with credits that they have purchased as subscribers. The second is subscribers who have purchased it not using a credit, but as a customer of Audible, and they therefore get a discount. And then the third is just an a la carte that's made by a customer who isn't an Audible listener or Audible subscriber. So those are the categories. But the point here is that they say they're using the net receipts. That means that they're taking something out that they consider a cost, which means that the 40% or 25% is not of what they sell it for. It's of what they're calculating as the net Now, they don't tell you what they're taking out of the gross to calculate that net. So that is a bit of a mystery. Personally, I still can't fathom how they can legally get away with putting a contract out 
with authors, thousands and thousands of authors that where they are not being transparent about the formula that they are using to calculate that net, how they can just leave it at net and call it good. That seems like a very sketchy practice. So, of course, the thing about going non-exclusive and taking that lower percentage rate is that then you're going to be able to put it out in many other places that you may choose. And you may want to work with another digital distributor. You may want to sell it yourself directly. And I will tell you how you can do that. But that choice of not going exclusive is a very big and important choice to make. And I highly recommend that you go non-exclusive, even if you choose to go through ACX, which I also recommend that you not do. This is definitely one of those cases where biggest is not best. Specific to the royalties question, you're going to get, if you do go exclusive, you're going to get something less than 40% of whatever they choose to sell it for. And if you go non-exclusive, you're going to get something less than 25%. We don't know exactly how much less, and you really won't know until you look at your royalty statement and yeah, see what's there. You should also be aware that if Audible chooses to give your audiobook away as a teaser to draw in a subscriber, that you will not get any royalties on that because they have technically not sold your audiobook. They've given it away. They have claimed the right to be able to do that without asking for your permission. And in spite of the fact that they have received revenue in exchange for your audiobook, it is technically subscriber money and not for your audiobook. It is a very sketchy detail, but I just want you to be aware that you could get as low as 0% for some of your audiobook sales on Audible. Now, there are other digital distributors that will claim a much higher percentage that you'll be getting. And one of those is Authors Republic, and we do use their services because they have the widest distribution available. But it's important to read the fine print. And while they may say that you get 70%, again, we need to ask of what? And if it's 70% of what they receive, then and the retailers are taking about 50%, then you're going to get... 70% of the 50%, or if the retailers keep even a higher percentage, which they sometimes do, then you'll have 70% of whatever that percentage is. I won't lie, it can be discouraging to see your royalties reports from digital distributors. And there are many other distribution services that are out there, some of them claiming 75%, various various other percentages. There are often they are doing that same thing where they're quoting the percentage of a percentage that they're receiving that's most typical and not being very transparent about that. And remember that each business that is engaged in the process along whatever path you choose, that each business needs to take something, some part of that royalty percentage for their work in the process. So you're actually paying each company to do their part, which is appropriate, but it can add up. And the more that adds up, the more it cuts into the percentage that you'll be receiving. Now, I don't want to leave you in a downer, but we're going to go to, we're going to take a short pause. And when we come back, I'm going to talk with you about some other solutions that will dramatically increase your potential royalties. We'll be right back. Frustrated by the royalty rates for your audiobook, Annoyed that when the digital distributors say 70%, they actually mean 70% of 50% or 80% of 70%, neither of which is an actual 70%. Wishing there was a way to cut out or at least shrink the middleman. Yet, 
You want your audiobook listeners to have a smooth and positive experience, and a direct download sale from your website won't deliver that. Pro Audio Voices hears you. Out of our commitment to our author clients, we've created Amplify, a program that provides an actual 65% royalties of the price you set, that gives you access to your customers' names and emails so you can reconnect with them, and keeps you in the driver's seat. Check it out at ProAudioVoices.com in the marketing menu. So, as you just heard, Amplify Audiobooks is a solution that is now available, has a great user experience from the listener's perspective, an app that they can listen to your audiobook with, and it has a vendor dashboard where you are literally selling directly your audiobooks to your listeners. So, it's a little bit like, imagine, if you will, a mall and you have a store in the mall. You can have in your store one or more audiobooks, and you can have your sign out front, and you'll want to be, when you're marketing to the world, you're going to want to be pointing them to your store, and there are other stores nearby where others are inviting their followers to come to their store where they might also happen to see yours because you're right next door or within this mall where people will be wandering around. Very similar to that, but all online. Some of the really big differences, and since we're focused on royalties, I will stay focused on that. The royalty payout is of the gross amount that you choose to sell it for. So you get to choose the price, whatever you say. You might want to look at what it's selling for on Audible and decide to beat that price. So yours is the best price out there. And then you're still going to be earning more because rather than 25% of the net of whatever they say it is, you're going to be earning 65% of the gross So just to be really clear for anyone that doesn't understand those terms very well, the gross is the the amount that is paid by the customer. So if you sell a book for $10 and it costs the customer $10, that gross price is the $10 and you get $6.50 of that. Now, most often you would have to pay, even if it was you were selling it on your own website, you'd be paying merchant fees, for example. And you may have other fees. Like, n- there are ways to sell direct from your website, but you have to use some service in order to be able to do that. And when you sell direct on your website, you need to pay for that service on a monthly basis. And You might think of your store in that context as a standalone store that's out in the middle of the countryside. Hopefully, you'll be able to get traffic from town to drive by or drive out to visit your store, but it takes a lot more marketing because you're not having anyone else near you that are going to also be a part of that community that is driving traffic to your store or to your area, to the mall. In this case, and coming back to that clarification about what gross and what net means, so that $10 that your customer pays, you are not paying merchant fees, which are the fees that credit card companies or banks charge for your customers to be able to use a credit card. So the Amplify Audiobooks platform pays those fees so that you don't have to. And it's really hard to not talk about the other benefits of the Amplify Audiobooks platform in that you're able to create coupons, do promotional pricing, and have access to your customer information, which is invaluable and something that you'll never get on a regular retail platform. But there's one other thing that I want you to understand about royalties, how they work, and a way to think about them as well. Because there is a difference in terms of the Amplify Audiobooks platform. There's a setup fee. 
you don't have a setup fee with these other digital distributors because they're taking all of their fees at the back end. These large chunks of your royalties of each sale that they're taking is how they get paid. But they get paid for the lifetime of your audiobook. With a setup fee, the fees are taken at the front end and then the rest of your royalty earnings are yours. There's only a $1 a month maintenance fee on Amplify audiobooks. That is very easily recouped in less than one audiobook sale per month. So while you might look at the setup fee as a barrier, I want you to really recognize that what's happening on every other platform is that they're taking their fee and more than that setup fee, way more than that setup fee, by collecting such a high percentage on every single sale. In the long term, you're going to come out way ahead by doing the setup fee and then enjoying receiving that much higher percentage on your royalties. I'm going to wrap this up for today, but I want to strongly encourage you to check out Amplify Audiobooks as a distribution option, a direct sale option for you as an author. If you are an audiobook listener, and you should be, especially if you are an author with audiobooks, then please check out AmplifyAudiobooks.com and support your fellow authors. There's some amazing, wonderful audiobooks on that platform, and it's a great way to buy direct, knowing that your purchase dollars are having a much bigger impact and supporting your fellow authors. For all of you authors to check out the platform and get more details about that, you can go to proaudiovoices.app or you can go to proaudiovoices.com and look under the distribution tab where you'll see Amplify. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen and I look forward to hearing your feedback, your questions. And if you have an audiobook production project, we'd love to talk with you about that. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.